Today we're going to go over some campfire cooking mistakes to avoid. A lot of these things I have learned the hard way. So let's dive right in with mistake number one, which is not checking any local fire restrictions before you head out. So I love to plan my meals at home. I like to think things through and I have gotten to a campsite where there were fire restrictions in place and I had planned to cook over the fire. So just make sure before you head out for your trip, before you start planning your meals, that you are checking for all of those local fire restrictions. It's just a simple thing that you can Google, whether you're on forest land, BLM land, or even at a campground, get that information before you head out. Next mistake is not having the right cookware for cooking over a campfire. So some camp cooking gear is perfectly fine for a propane camp stove, but is not safe for the campfire. So make sure that you have really good gear. One of the best pieces of gear that you can have is the trusty cast iron pan. This is something I use all the time because it's incredibly durable, easy to take care of once you have a good seasoning on here, and you can use it on the propane stove and over the campfire. It also holds heat really well, so it's gonna help give you a nice even heat as you're cooking over the fire. Along with that, you wanna make sure that all your gear is, like I said, safe for the fire, which means no plastic, and I don't even use any sort of silicone stuff on the fire either. Now for pots, a great option are just stainless steel pots. Again, check with the manufacturer to make sure that it, they say that you can use it over a campfire. Uh, as you can see, it's going to kind of turn this color as you use it. This is an example of a newer pot. Even some stainless steel cookware might not be safe for the fire. So that's why I said earlier, really make sure that you check with the manufacturer. Sometimes if the stainless steel is thin, it will warp over the campfire or the stainless steel pot or pan will have a handle that has a component that's plastic and then doesn't make it safe for the fire. So really check on that even if it is stainless steel. The reason I have so many of these is I was actually recently testing campfire cooking kits. So I will link to that blog post in the description below if you want more info on the gear. I don't want to turn this into a gear video, just make sure that it's safe for campfire use. The next mistake is not preparing and organizing before you cook. So what are you cooking? What ingredients do you need? What pots and pans do you need? Think through all of these things before you get started so that you're not frantically running back and forth from the fire to your cooler and getting this pan and that ingredient. Oh, I forgot to chop this. I gotta chop this really quickly and then run over to the fire. No, that is not a good way to work around the fire. You want to just kind of be relaxed and calm. So think about what are the ingredients that you need? Are there things that you can chop and prepare before you get the fire going, before you bring everything over to the fire? And think through every single step of that meal so that you're just prepared and relaxed when you're actually out there cooking. Now, along with that, Feel free, if you have other people that you're camping with, maybe delegate out some of the tasks to other people so that you're not taking on too many things at once when you're cooking. So for example, Nick and I are always camping and cooking together. And a lot of times when we're cooking over the fire, I will have him grill the meats and then I'll cook some of the other sides so that I'm not really worrying about timing the meat or jumping from that to other things. And we can just both enjoy having our tasks and uh, cooking together around the fire. So delegate some things out if you can to other campers. The next thing that you wanna do when you're preparing and organizing is also checking around the fire pit and making sure that there's no hazardous things for you to trip over as you're cooking. So moving any big branches that are maybe near the fire that you could trip over, get your shovel and get your water bucket nearby and, and have your space be clear of any of those hazards. I have a free camp cooking starter kit, which you can download in the link below. And this is really something I made to help you stay organized when you're camping. It helps you plan out your meals at home, pack everything up, and then it gives you instructions and just a way to stay organized when you're at camp. So if you're new to all of this stuff, definitely check out that link in the description below. The next mistake is not letting your fire get a good bed of coals before you start to work around it. So what I mean is when you're starting your fire, you're going to add some wood and it's going to burn and then it's going to come back down. You're going to add some more wood and you're going to keep doing that. Over time, you're going to get a really nice bed of coals. Coals are very hot. You can cook things just over coals. 
but also having a good bit of coals will allow you to have a more prolonged heat and a more even heat when you're cooking. So I like to hang out, enjoy the fire, keep feeding some wood in there until you get that bed of coals. Then you can sort of spread those coals out as well and give yourself a lot more options when you're cooking around the fire. So here we have our fire going and I'm just putting little pieces of wood in over time. And shortly, I think we're gonna have some good coals to work with. Next mistake is not really understanding the different types of heat that you can utilize when you're cooking over the fire. So first of all, you don't need a big fire. This is a very small fire that we're going to cook over. And in order to film this video, I had to lure Nick in to helping me with the promise of breakfast. And it is 1254. So <laughs> I'm gonna make some eggs and sausage and some coffee and it'll help illustrate these different types of heat. So in general, you have a direct heat and an indirect heat. In this pot over here, I want to boil some water to make coffee. So I wanna use a more direct high heat, which means I have those flames right under my pot versus this cast iron pan where I'm going to cook the eggs and sausage. I don't want a super high heat. And so I'm gonna slide this pan off to the side where there's some coals under there. It's getting a little bit of heat from this side from the flames, but it's not directly under or over the flames and therefore I'm gonna get a little bit of a lower heat here. Indirect heat in general is great for vegetables, for example, versus a direct high heat is great if you wanna sear a piece of meat. So there's a lot of options and a lot of different ways that you can use the fire. On top of cooking, you also need to manage the fire and keep adding some wood to it and maybe move things off to the side or under the pan if you need a little bit more heat. It is something that you're going to learn over time. The more you cook like this, the more you're gonna get a feel and a sense for how to adjust the heat for what you need. So it takes a little bit of practice. It's part of what makes this type of cooking so much fun, in my opinion. So we're gonna do some sausage and some scrambled eggs and some coffee. Got my sausages going. I did end up moving them to a higher heat just to get some color on them. The next mistake is not having a meat thermometer. This thing is very inexpensive. Got it on Amazon, I'll link to it below. And I just keep this in my camping food bin so that when I'm out camping, when I'm cooking protein over the fire, I do not need to guess and to hope that it, has, it is at a safe temperature. I can just check. You don't need me to tell you that you don't wanna be getting sick when you're out camping. So having something like this that's inexpensive, easy to use, at the ready will just save you from having to guess. You can just temperature check your meat. The next mistake is not being prepared to handle common injuries that you may encounter when you're out camping. I know we don't wanna really think about these things. Of course, we don't want anyone to get hurt when they're cooking around the fire, but it's good to think through what are the possibilities and have the skills to handle them if needed when you're out camping. Because the reality is sometimes you might not be near any sort of medical care easily or quickly and you have to be prepared to handle these things at camp so i recommend that people take wilderness first aid courses at the very least there's wilderness first responder courses which is what i take and these types of courses will just give you the skills to handle basic first aid things when you're out camping now speaking of that this is an example of my med kit that I build out that I leave in my car and I periodically go through here, check it, make sure all the medications and, and everything is up to date and I know exactly what's in here. It's a good idea for everyone in your group to know where the med kit is, right? Like if you need to tell someone to go get the med kit really quickly, is everyone gonna know where it is? Or are you gonna be shuffling through a bunch of gear to try to find it? So have the skills to handle common injuries and then also know where your med kit is, know what's in your med kit and know how to use the things that are in the med kit. On top of that, obviously cooking on the fire, there are some dangers. It's hot. There are little embers that can pop out of the fire. So you wanna have the gear and the awareness to protect yourself. So one of those things are a nice pair of long metal tongs so that I don't need to be getting super close to the fire. And then I also have these fire resistant gloves that I love because I put these on and then it's protecting my hand, it's protecting my forearm from the fire and anything that can kind of pop and hit my hand. These are just a couple examples of things that you can bring along to help protect yourself as you're working around the fire. One thing that I do wanna mention is these fire resistant gloves, they're awesome. But if you are grabbing a hold of a hot pan, 
Eventually it will get hot through these gloves. Don't hold on to things for super long. I have had pans like with hot handles that get really hot through these gloves. So you just want to be extra careful when you're working around the fire again, like I can't say that enough, <laughs> but yeah, these are great, but they do have some limitations. Those are some of my campfire cooking tips and mistakes to avoid. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new here, I have so many camping resources on my channel now after years of doing this. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a new video and check out this one next for more tips and camp cooking. I will see you in that one.